Is the craze around trying to boost your VO2 max really worth the hype? Does it actually make you a faster runner and can you boost it? Elliot Kipchoge is the fastest marathoner ever, but is that all down to his VO2 max? If you're trying to run faster or you've plateaued or you don't even know where to start, this might be the most important thing you learn all year. Let's break down what VO2 max is, how to improve it and how to boost it. And then we'll have a look into Kipchoge and do a deep dive to figure out whether it's worthwhile focusing on VO2 max compared to other performance metrics. So what is VO2 max? All right, so what is this magic VO2 max measure? Basically, it's your aerobic fitness. And if you wanna be specific, it's how efficiently your body can use oxygen during exercise. And it's expressed as milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute. Now, typically it will range between, I'd say 30 as a beginner and 90 as an elite runner. So technically the higher VO2 max means better endurance, faster running and feeling less tired at a particular given effort. Now it's got a pretty strong genetic component to it, but it can still be trained and improved quite significantly. So don't let that hold you back. And the best way to think of your VO2 max is that absolute ceiling of your fitness that your body is capable of achieving. Or if we were to give a car analogy, the maximum horsepower that you can get out of your engine. So it's a really important data point to track. Now, after a while of using a smartwatch, it will spit out an estimate using pace and heart rate data. But the true most accurate measure is to run on a treadmill in a lab hooked up to a breathing mask. But for us, your watch is pretty accurate enough. And then just a side note about VO2 max is that it isn't just a performance metric. It's actually one of the strongest predictors of longevity. So with higher levels linked to significantly lower risk of all cause mortality. So it's worthwhile understanding what VO2 max is about if you wanna live longer, how to improve it and how to boost it. The first thing to understand is like most things, beginners are able to see big gains in improving their VO2 max in a relatively short period of time, especially compared to the elites. So technically you can boost it with the right training and beginners have been seen to be making 20% improvement gains, sometimes more in as little as three or four months. And that's pretty epic. But the more trained you are and the more advanced starting point you have, the more difficult it is to continue that pace of change. The more advanced a runner you become, the more diminishing the returns become to the point where the elite runners can only improve so far as they pretty much reach their natural and mostly genetic defined limit of that aerobic system. And men will typically have around a 20% higher VO2 max than women. And from the age of around 30, unfortunately for some of us, VO2 max begins to decline by about 1% a year. Although you can preserve that and slow it with consistent training. Now the best workouts to let's say boost, mostly if you're a beginner or improve your VO2 max, actually involves HIIT training. So high intensity interval training. Now HIIT is time efficient, but very stress and load heavy on the body, which beginner runners doing low amounts of mileage are more likely to be able to absorb than others. So let's say three HIIT sessions per week with recovery days in between, the Norwegian model of four by four kilometers with a three minute recovery, running at 90% effort, so that's about 3K pace, has been shown to give you the best bang for your buck. Or another one that I like is that you can do six by a mile, and that's between five to 10K pace with a three minute full recovery. The point being that you're almost fully recovered to hit the quality on each rep. And as time goes by, you can get fitter, you start dropping the recovery time or increase the amount of reps or both. Now these are hard rep sessions though, like real hard, and should leave you completely exhausted come the finish. And that's why it's important to have those rest days in between to make sure that your body is coping with the load. If you're more trained and a higher mileage runner, doing that amount of HIIT training combined with other training is gonna cause you injury. And the risk of getting injured versus the rewards of boosting your VO2 max by doing high amounts of HIIT versus lower intensity training is just not justified. So keep up a session of HIIT per week, but make sure your other sessions are low intensity, zone two type runs, which will still contribute to your overall VO2 max. Let's say that you're a fairly established runner, a 330, 345 marathoner, and that low hanging fruit and quick gains of improving your VO2 max have likely diminished and you're better off now focusing on other areas 
that will yield you greater performance returns and make you a faster runner. And that's where our man Kipchoge comes in as a great example. I'm gonna to push to a thousand subscribers, so just a quick reminder to like and subscribe. Thanks to everybody that has done so far. The reach of these videos, which started off as a bit of fun, has purely gone global. So I've got you guys to thank for that. And the reason I started it is that when I first started running, I found it an absolute minefield of information that was either super like elementary or too scientific, and I just couldn't figure out much. So hopefully I found a sweet spot to make it a little bit more digestible for you all. Let's go back to our man Kipchoge. He's got a reported VO2 max level of around 80. It's never been officially disclosed, he's never announced it, but that's what people have been able to surmise. Now, if we compare that with someone like Killian Hornet, who's an ultra marathoner with a VO2 max of 92, only one of them would actually be capable of running a two hour marathon, and that's Kipchoge. In fact, there are actually plenty of runners in the marathon field that Kipchoge competes against that aren't able to keep up with him. And that's because Kipchoge excels in two other areas, which you know to be even more important to trained runners, and that's your running economy and lactate threshold. Kipchoge is so efficient in his running economy and how he uses oxygen. So if you were to think of a car, basically how fuel efficient he is, how many miles he gets per gallon, as well as having such a high lactate threshold, which allows him to push his body harder for longer, or again, if you were to think about a car, how much and how long he can push the engine for without it overheating. Now, the best way to improve both of these is to have a mixed intensity training schedule. And that's where you run easy mileage or jog to boost that running economy and incorporate tempo runs to raise your lactate threshold. I did a whole video on the best way to improve both of these just here. The tipping point of where to focus more on these two rather than specifically VO2 max will be somewhere between the three hour 30 and four hour marathon mark. If you're slower than that, you can really increase your fitness ceiling. I would recommend focusing on VO2 max training, not just from a running, but an overall health perspective and longevity perspective. Because beginner runners can expect to see between a 30 to 50% VO2 max improvement in the first six to 12 months. Whereas trained athletes will see much less. Once you've got to the point where you're hitting those diminishing returns and you've taken advantage of that low hanging fruit, it's time to switch to a longer term and mixed running training strategy, something like pyramidal training. And that's where you're gonna spend the majority of your time doing low and mid intensity training, and that will improve your lactate threshold and your running economy. At the same time though, it will maintain and probably slightly improve that VO2 max for the longer term. It's important to remember though that consistency of running three to five times a week is much more important than doing eight to 12 weeks of hardcore hit training and then having to take a big break because you got injured. Don't sacrifice longevity for those smaller VO2 max gains. Consistency is king. It's all right.